Hey, hey, it's Shay Keister, and I'm your host and the founder of Casual Cattle Conversations, a global rancher education company that strives to bring honest thoughts and conversations from ranchers and leaders to other ranchers. Be sure to follow Cattle Convos on social media to have more in-depth conversations around the ranching business and lifestyle brought to you. If you are ready to take your operation to the next level and improve your lifestyle too, send me a message about my Rancher Mind group. Rancher Minds are monthly roundtable discussions for ranchers to learn from peers and experts and leave the call with actionable advice to make changes on their own operations. With that, let's see who our guest is today and what experience and advice they have to offer you to improve your own operation. Well, thank you for joining me today. I'm excited to have you on the show. I know this is our first time talking, but I have visited with your brother a little bit. So to start off, would you really share what your background in the ranching space is and how you got started? Uh, Thank you for having me, Shay. Um, Basically, I'm a fifth generation cattle rancher in in the northern part of Chihuahua, Mexico. our family moved here in the in the late 1800s, early 1900s, um, and we've been ranching in this area ever since, going on almost 100 years now. <clears throat> but my my personal background, while well, I was born born at the ranch, raised at the ranch, um, basically this is this is all I know. Uh, when I first started actually managing the ranch, I was fresh out of high school. I mean, it hasn't been that long. Uh, I didn't go to college. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't really want to go to college. So, um, well, the ranch was the second best thing to do. Um, so, so I started managing the ranch in 2016. Um, I'm only 24 years old and well, since then I've, I've, we've started, uh, with more intensive grazing practices, more regenerative uh grazing practices here at the ranch and, and we've been able to to maximize our profits uh by doing so <clears throat> how has the conditions of your pastures changed with these holistic approaches uh well we've been able to 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 increase our our carrying capacity by three times uh, three times as much. So, I mean, that gives you an idea the the quality of forage we have now. Uh, we we don't give any any protein. I mean, it's strictly grass grass uh, fed uh, beef. I mean, there's we don't give uh, any other type of forage. Just the grass that we grow um, during the winter. We graze all we graze all year round, um, and and our area is a semi arid area to, uh, area we get from anywhere from 15 to 18 inches of rain a year uh, but we do have uh, some some drought years like in 2020 we got four inches of rain and we could still uh, double our carrying capacity with without having that much rain um, so as far as our pastures I mean you can see the difference in, in a heartbeat um, and well, the, the numbers are there to show, to show that this type of management actually works. And I mean, it's it, for a ranch in this area to, to, to run as much cattle as, as we do. It's, I mean, it's, it's one, one in a hundred. So, um, I mean, that's our, our, we, we've seen the benefits. So what is your like stocking right now or what does your carrying capacity look like now that you, you said you've increased the amount of cattle you can run by three times. So what does that look like for you? Uh, in this area, people usually run from 12 hectares, 12 to 15 hectares per cow per year. Um, we use a metric system in Mexico. Acres would be about roughly 20 acres per cow per year um, and we're running three hectares per cow per year which is roughly about seven acres per cow per year wow so what what are your forage types there what are some of those um native forages that you're uh, we, 
we mostly we have perennial uh, grasses, uh, blue grama, black grama, red grama. Uh, there's we we've counted up to twenty different types of species here at the at the ranch. I mean, they're all mostly all perennials. We have very very little annuals. Um, the high quality forages that keep their protein year round and and with the right rest period, it it, it really helps um, the cattle eat a better diet. Uh, when 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 you have, uh, I mean, stockpiled forages, it, it helps their nutrition like you can't imagine. So there are multiple different ways to implement regenerative practices when you look at grazing. What models are you looking at? Um, I'm sure you've kind of adapted it to your own ranch and what works as many people do, but really when you say you are implementing regenerative practices, what does that look like for you on a daily basis? Um, here at the ranch, we have over 500 paddocks, uh, give or take the five, all those 500 paddocks, we, we, we make them uh, year round with polywire. Everything we use is portable. So it has our, our, our infrastructure is so portable, we can pick up and move wherever we want and at a very low cost. So we build over 500 paddocks a year. We move daily. Sometimes we move even four or five times a day. So it's highly intensive so we can get the best out of the, out of our forage, uh, use it properly and, and rest it properly also. So out of those 500 paddocks, um, we have a, a rotation of about 425 days of rest per paddock. So, I mean, our per paddock, we have a, a, a time period. We use it maybe six hours per, for every 420 days. So our, our rest period is, 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 is what's making this work. Wow. So you talked about how you're constantly on the move, moving cattle, how many employees, how many people do you have working on your operation to manage this workload then? Um, it's only me and, and I have a one hired hand, uh, but other than that, we're running, I mean, in between me and my hired help, we're running over 500 cows and, and we have about 200 stalkers here at the ranch right now. So there's a, there's, there's quite a bit of work, but I mean, when, when you're org organized and since you move them every single day, it cuts down on your, on, on basically, uh, checking the cattle health wise, since you see them every day, I mean, it, it simplifies everything. Most people think because of moving once a day, it's gonna be a lot more difficult, but honestly, it, it's a lot simpler than moving moving every 15 days or every 20 days. Um, and, and your paddocks are a lot smaller. So it's easy to get around your paddocks with polywire uh, in, in a day and, and just, just keep it portable, keep it simple. And well, I don't have that much help, but uh, we have, uh, we have a well-organized uh, ranch, well-fueled ranch, I guess. So what are some processes you've implemented to make putting up that polywire faster, easier, just make the whole process more efficient? Um, what, what we usually do is, is make, a, instead of having like your typical wagon wheel or or having uh, something permanent. Uh, basically, we go with the, what the, our land gives us. So all our, our all our fences go off of the terrain. Um, most of our our ranch is flat. So basically, we just build a small squares, and then we have water in every single paddock. So the water it's all piped. We have a, a pipeline, a two-inch pipeline that goes throughout the ranch. And from there, when we're grazing the, the animals, we can connect uh, our portable water trough to, to wherever we need, wherever we need the, the pipe, the, the water for cattle. So with that, you know, do you do any like, you know, lease out any recreation activities on the ranch or do anything on that front? 
um, in addition to this, or do you just, I mean, is it just, are you a commercial operation? What does that look like for you guys? Uh, basically it's, it's a commercial operation. What we do, what, uh, basically it's cow calf. And, um, once we wean our calves, we export them to the U S. Uh, so we export live cattle to the U S other recreational, uh, activities we do. There's a little bit of hunting. Uh, I mean, white tail hunting, uh, uh, turkeys. Um, but other than that, it's, it's purely just cow calf. So we might run a little stalkers here and there, but, um, basically just cow calf. Okay. So have these grazing practices benefited? Have you seen a large benefit in the amount of wildlife present, um, the availability of hunting on your ranch? Yeah, for sure. I mean, what, what's happening, we're basically building a, a microclimate here at the, at the ranch that is helping, is helping us uh, with all types of wildlife, biodiversity. Um, uh, we're, we also work with a lot of conservation services. Uh, basically, any migratory birds that come to our ranch, it's, it's a conservation. So we, we can uh, take care of, of, of those animals that that need need the habitat and uh we've been working with uh the rocky mountain bird Con conservancy for the past four years i think and uh basically what they do is take care of if all the migratory bird species that come from from the rockies down to the, down to mexico and uh that that's a big part of our 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 goal here at the ranch to to but at least leave what, what we have better than we, than when we got in. I think that's an awesome point to leave things better than when you found them and something a lot of ranchers try to do. So with that, kind of looking back at, you know, the types of practices you're using, you know, what resources do you go to, to continue your learning? You know, what did that process look like as you got started? Who did you turn to for advice? Uh, First, I, I turned to my dad. Obviously, he he uh, he was a when when the holistic management movement uh, came to Mexico, he was one of the first pioneers. So uh, I turned to my dad a lot, and and uh, also the Savory Institute helps a lot. And um, Ranching for Profit, I'm a a love a ex alumni from Ranching for Profit, which it help helps a lot when you're trying to run a business that well it's 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 you're running a business off of what nature gives you um and and you're trying to manage you're trying to manage resources that 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 can be be bettered uh improved um but knowing how to do it is is key and i mean here uh, fortunately, here in Mexico and Chihuahua, where there's quite a f quite a few people that are practicing uh, regenerative ag agriculture, regenerative ranching, whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of people here in, in Chihuahua in my state that uh, that are actually doing it. And basically, what we 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 all have a group chat and we just bounce ideas off of each other. But um, any any type of thing you want to learn. Or, or, I highly recommend to to take courses and 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 learn about it. Well, that's exciting. So what mindset do ranchers need to have when they are starting to get into regenerative grazing and really embrace that style of ranch management? Uh, I think they need to change their paradigm first. I mean, there's a lot of uh misconceptions of ranching especially here in, in chihuahua a lot of people think it's too dry it can't be done here um but they're just all paradigms you need to you need to change and and once once you start actually uh moving daily and get the hang of it well there's no better way to actually do it than, than doing it and and i mean your failures are going to be uh they're going to be um what's it called you're going to be it's going to be like your school i mean it's going to teach you how what, what not to do um but uh just changing your paradigms the way you think is 
it has 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 a lot to do with uh, a r running a ranch this this way. Well, awesome. Do you have any last advice for those who are interested in improving their grazing methods, or any last comments you'd like to share before we finish up today? Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of people get stuck on on yeah, I want to do the change, and but they don't know how to start the change. Um, I would recommend getting getting a consultant, having someone consult you first, so so you don't make the same mistakes like I did or or, or anyone else did. And uh, yeah, some people might say the consultants are 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 expensive or they charge too much, but he'll give you a helping hand once you start. And then once you're once you have a consultant, then then I I highly recommend. Uh, uh, keeping everything portable. I mean, there's no sense in in dumping a bunch of money when when you can actually do it with portable polywire, portable posts. Um, so so you're gonna basically be changing one thing for another. You're gonna be changing sweat for for an improvement or or changing money for for infrastructure. So I I highly recommend just. Uh, making everything portable. Uh, the more portable you have it, the more flexibility you have to, to graze wherever you can or, or, or in points of opportunity throughout your ranch. Um, but other than that, I mean, just it's time to change the way we think and it's time to change the way we ranch. Well, awesome. Thank you very much for joining me today. I'm excited to share this with my audience and appreciate all that you had to share. Thank you for having me, Shane. And that's a wrap on that one. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on the episode. And if you have any further questions around the topic, take care and have a great day.